Welcome to today's webinar and thank you for your attendance. My name is Orest. I'm a solutions engineer here at Starwind. And today we're going to talk about file service storage, how it is delivered in ZFS solutions, and how it works overall. So briefly on our today's agenda. Now, first we're going to talk about ZFS native file sharing options, how they work. We can, of course, mention briefly the SMB and NFS file sharing options, how ZFS file sharing is presented and works in different solutions, and as well, we're going to see how it is delivered in the Starwind SAN and NES. And of course, as traditionally, in the end of our webinar, we're going to have a short Q&A session where I'll be able to answer your questions. So let's actually cut in. Now, as we already know, ZFS is not just a file system, but also a volume manager. So this means that we get more than a very resilient file system with checksumming and data integrity mechanisms. It's also capable of collecting drives into RAID and further share storage as block devices, known as ZVOLs, or file systems, known traditionally as data sets. The latter means that we can share our storage via SMB or NFS protocols. When it comes to ZFS, we know that the primary level of contact is our Z pool. We can correspondingly share the entire Z pool or slice it into the required number of data sets and expose them over the required file level protocol. Correspondingly, in this case, each data set acts like a separate file system with its own set of rules and settings. This is really convenient when you need to present separate file service, for example, just separate file shares to different users with different permissions. Now, let's first take a look at the SMB. So, Save a Message block, one version of which was also known as Common Internet File System, CIFS, is basically a client-server communication protocol used for sharing access to files, printers, and other resources on a network. SMB has been used primarily to connect Windows computers, although most other systems, such as Linux and Mac OS, also include client components for connecting to SMB resources. Now, ZFS has a native mechanism to enable SMB sharing. Basically, for this, you need to create a Z pool, a data set, On it and then enable the set share SMB on property to enable the file sharing. Again, this can be set as per the entire Z pool or as per data sets inside the Z pool. You can as well provide the required settings and permissions for sharing your data set over a network, for example, to specific hosts or hosts on a certain subnet. The important thing is that your data set remains not published until you set the share SMB property on. And this all would have worked nicely, but the thing is that OpenZFS does not implement SMB itself. It just adds or removes shares to an SMB provider. So therefore, Samba server is still needed. Basically, when we turn on the share SMB property, what ZFS does, it basically creates the SMB config as it would be with the Samba server and tries providing it to share the data sets or the Z pools. Also, to be fair enough, uh, will ZFS indeed, while ZFS indeed has native file sharing options, it is the last documented part of ZFS with properties, options, and commands described in Oracle Solaris documentation, making it harder to get to work or various Linux distributives. Therefore, it is common to use the well-known Samba server instead without using the share SMB properties. The pretty much the same goes for NFS. So Network File System is a distributed file system protocol originally designed by Sound Microsystems in 1984, allowing a user on the client computer to access files or a network 
much like local storage is accessed. So just as with SMB, it's no secret, you need a provider to provide a share. So NFS server must be installed in order to share your ZFS data sets or NFS. As you can see, the syntax of properties for enabling NFS and SMB sharing is just the same. Once you enable the NFS sharing on your data set, you can further set the required rules and permissions for it and mount on the client. However, the situation here is similar to SMB. While ZFS indeed allows doing this with ZFS native, set share NFS on commands and then providing the required access properties, it again lacks the proper documentation. And then for adding your ZFS data sets or directories inside of it, as a pass to the common ETC exports can be considered as a more reliable way. In fact, that's what we can see in various ZFS based solutions on the market. So if we are talking about the products that have native ZFS support, such as Starwin, SAN and NAS, or TrueNAS, both rely on NFS using common ETC exports route to export data sets or directories. And just as well for SMB, it's done using the common Samba server without using the ZFS native sharing options. Even if we go further, as an example of the Open Media, Media Vault, although not having ZFS implemented directly, but as a plugin, it also uses the common tools for file sharing like ETC exports for NFS and the common Samba server. Now, to see how this is delivered in this Tau and Sand and NAS, I'm going to make you a short demonstration. So, what we have here is just two ESXi nodes. And let's log in. Now, on one of our ESXi hosts, I have the Star Wars NS VM already running with some storage provisioned into it. Now, if we take a look in the web console, we'll see that we have a set of just four drives and the ZFS pool created on top, basically with the RAID Z2 resilience type. Now, currently, the NFS and SMB file sharing options are delivered in San Andreas using the text user interface. Further, they will, call, they will, of course, be present in the web management interface as well. So first, let me connect to our San Andreas using the simple VMware remote console. Let's log in. And I hope I got the password correctly. Yes, and here you can see so far a simple menu allowing us to configure the NFS or SMB share on our Z pool. So let's start with the NFS. Here we can choose our already created ZFS pool and let's specify our NFS share name will be simply NFS. Let's go next. Here we can set the allowed IP range. Now I'm going to leave it by default for all. And we can create our NFS. Now let's try to connect our NFS to our ESXi node. So here is the second ESXi node I'm just going to use to create a new NFS data store. Again, it will be simply named NFS. Here we specify, of course, the IP address of the SNS virtual machine. Pass to the NFS share and we select the version 404 with the protocol. Our credentials and let's actually create the NFS data store. 
let's browse it and maybe upload some file to it, just like a texting document to be simple. And we can see it's working perfectly. Now, let's create another type of the file share, namely the SMB share. The process is just the same. We select the ZFS pool in case there are several options of, Z of that pools created. We will, of course, provide them. Let's specify a name, SMB, to stay consistent and yet simple. Again, doing this for all the AP range by default. Now let's actually create. Okay, now let's get into there using some Windows-based machine. Again, you're specifying the IP address of the style and send an SVM, and we can see our SMB directory created. Required, remove something here, and continue working with that. Simple as this. So far, yet again, in the current builds, it will be delivered as the text user interface. In the future releases, this all will, of course, will be a part of the web user interface with a more granular approach and configurations. And now it would be just the exact time for you to ask your questions, if any. And a question from Dimitra, is it possible to add L2Arc to Stow and ZFS? Yes, it is possible. As the ZFS integration, we can use the L2Arc or we can perform many other configurations if required to extend our RAM cache to the SSD type storage just as well. Instead of the default log device, we can use the syslog just as well based on the flash storage, for example. And I guess this is it for the questions. The record of today's webinar will be available on our website and you'll be notified about the recorded version availability. So far, huge thanks for everyone who joined the session. And yeah, another question from Dimitra right on time. Uh, will the web UI anytime be available? Uh, yes, uh, it will be. Uh, don't want to provide you with any false advertisements or timelines, but we are looking into Q1, maybe Q2 of the next year. Okay, so once again, Huge thanks for everyone who attended this webinar. Really appreciate devoting your time for this. Once again, thank you. Wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and see you on our next webinar. Keep safe.